let me once more introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alexei Sabada, in, you can, or easy, just Alex. Uh, as said, I work for Ukraine International Airlines, uh, one of the largest Eastern European carriers. Um, I am, let's say, uh, I'm a project manager for the maintenance projects and I work uh, already for almost seven years in the industry and uh, as said uh, uh, by the way uh, I would like to th thank all uh, thank Alexander for the for this opportunity because uh, I'm not an often I'm not an often speaker or have such uh, possibilities for so for me it's a very big honor actually to speak and uh, I would be very uh, my aim is to share some practical knowledge some practical helpful information which would uh, be interesting and uh, help you somehow I don't know uh, whatever however it's possible so uh, once again thank you alexander for this and uh, our topic for today is uh, um, an airline and uh, an mro provider so basically customer and uh, service provider so um before uh, before we well actually there's nothing special in today's presentation i mean i was thinking you know as i had a very short time to prepare for this because uh, we were like uh, overloaded with some work and uh, i was always thinking what would be a good presentation to share but uh, this morning i just uh, discussed with Alexander and uh, it we decided to make something very simple very short uh, to make it more like an interactive uh, knowledge sharing for you and, um, and just to maximum you know discuss some practical things from our everyday life uh, in the relation from the relations of uh, the main the operator airline and the customer the MRO basically um, so before uh, I start speaking I just would like to ask uh, maybe you if you are uh, just raise your hands who are the students of uh, university uh, okay, so uh, and everyone else is uh, from aviation uh, sphere or uh, business or airline or MRO provider. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> um, because I would like you know to speak more about uh, opportunities, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to speak about some practical learning or, you know, uh, sharing theories because there are a lot of books, a lot of trainings, a lot of uh, information in the internet. Uh, that's why, as, as I said, I want to share some practical, helpful things which would, um, you know, really help you. The reason why I'm asking who is who and uh, uh, from where are uh, you guys is because I want to understand um, if uh, you are a student and you want to, let's say, become a uh, professional in the aviation industry, whether it's an engineer or, a, uh, I don't know, a manager of the airline or... Uh, I don't know, if, or it's a safety manager, uh, or it's uh, an instructor, uh, you know, we have to, first of all, uh, understand <clears throat> what our future opportunities are. I mean, we must feel uh, what actually our region, I mean, Lithuania, Eastern Europe, 
or this part of geography <clears throat> actually allows us to do because you know uh, uh, the world is um, developing with the technology so fast that uh, you know people are uh, all the time merge I mean moving from one location to another um, managers for, I, I know a lot of Lithuanians are now um, uh, talented managers in uh, English U United Kingdom companies and uh, a lot of Ukrainians are working also in Lithuania and uh, so but we have to understand what opportunity gives us uh, the aviation industry so let's uh, speak about some ideas uh, um, okay let's see if hmm? okay Let's see what we have. Hmm. This is what I always said, and uh, yeah. So, um, as as uh, just some information about. Uh, um, I'm as an airline and uh, a representative before I was in the MRO uh, business. Actually, um, I'd like to uh, tell you one interesting story. My um, introduction in aviation actually started from Lithuania. And uh, how did it happen, basically? So, simple story. Um, I was actually working in totally different, uh, let's say, business, non-related to aviation, but it was related to infrastructure. And uh, somehow one of my friends, he was connected with uh, the Avial Solutions Group and at that time developing uh, fastly growing business of, of FL Technics. And... Uh, I had some friends in Ukraine International Airlines and uh, I came here with my friends to to learn about just to you know it was just a friendly visit to see what is this MRO business about and at that time we it was 2010 2011 yeah yeah it was 2011 uh, it was a time when uh, Ukraine... Actually, one question. Is everyone familiar what is an MRO? Yeah? So it's basically a, uh, a thing a, show, a thing which is uh, some maintenancing aircraft. So all we know that uh, we have an, air, uh, an airline and uh, the airline... Like you own a car, you have to do the service, maintenance, uh, change oil, and so on and so forth, look after the safety, and so basically the service provider is an MRO. Sorry about this, but just maybe there is someone who is uh, hearing about this first time. But I'll, tr I'll try to make it interesting for everyone. <clears throat> so, at that time in Ukraine, we had, uh, like Ukraine was a post-Soviet country with a huge aviation uh, potential. But, of course, it was uh, all about Soviet techniques, you know, uh, Soviet aircrafts and uh, the world, uh, Europe already uh, at that time, even Ukrainian airlines, all of them used new Boeings. Uh, it was a time when the NG was first, uh, 737 NG was like introduced to the market and I think Ukraine International Airlines was one of the first uh, company who were operating uh, 737 NGs in, uh, I think in Central Europe, uh, in CIS countries, yeah, am I right? Yeah. And uh, Ukraine uh, International, of course, had its own maintenance uh, organization, 
with super talented uh, personnel, good engineering because Ukraine has good aviation universities and uh, therefore the preparation this, at that time it was very effective and uh, we had the hangar, we had, we had people and you know somehow the infrastructure and at that time I came to FL Technics and I saw like you know this was as a business the MRO as a business product with Lithuania having at that time no uh, national carrier there was no uh, base uh, carrier in, in Lithuania there was, a, I think, only Air Baltic, yes, in the region, yes, and uh, at that time. You can correct me, uh, because I may be wrong in some... <laughs> I don't want to spoil your reputation. <laughs> okay, so, but it was selling their MRO services, like, you know, to Russia, world, I, I mean, to Eastern Europe, to European operators. And when I, I, I saw all this, I came back to Ukraine and... I like thought to myself, oh, come on, we have such a huge potential. We even had the uh, EASA certificate, which is needed, which, I mean, EASA certificate, certificate is uh, a certificate given by European Aviation Safety Authorities, which makes the MRO, let's say, um, credible to maintenance the aircraft. So. We will talk about this later, about the reputation of uh, the MRO. So, uh, and at that time I started knocking in the doors to UIA management, to the airport of uh, Kiev, and asked, we have, let's say, a good example in Lithuania, uh, a fastly growing MRO business, which we can actually do here but unfortunately um, maybe it's painful to say but still the process is I just want to give you a compliment your your country uh, was uh, let's say um, mentally uh, way ahead of let's say Ukrainian uh, mentality making business and it was very hard for you know uh, the airport the airline let's say the government to understand that this is a good business that uh, the future that we know that number of aircrafts growing number of uh, airlines also growing so passengers want to fly more and uh, we see this tendency every year growing 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 and I said, we have to have a maintenance infrastructure. It actually didn't uh, turn out to be anything really successful, but what we did, we did a joint venture between Ukraine International Airlines and uh, the airport, because hangar belonged to airport, engineers belonged to Ukraine International, and we made some business. Of course, it was very hard to find uh, customers and uh, the business processes did not allow to actually um, build a uh, good product, a good brand. That's why me and Alexander, we, uh, he was working at that time in, the, in FL Technics. We agreed that the field technics will, at that time, their hangar was not enough because they had too many customers and the space in the hangar was actually not enough. Ukraine did uh, like a subcontract for their customers and we wanted to, this was like a start of the business. So, um, this is an uh, example of uh, just a story for you to understand that uh, uh, Lithuania did a, very, actually, did a very good job today. It's, uh, FL Technics uh, grew to a very huge company having its branch in Asia, 
uh, with opening line maintenance, uh, mm, providing line ma line maintenance, uh, all o almost let's say yes in all parts of the geography. So, this is actually a good opportunity, yeah, for uh, for you to 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 consider because um, to my uh, to my I mean. Uh, I'm absolutely sure this is a very successful business case which would allow you as future aviation managers, engineers to, uh, um, to know that uh, you have a successful launch pad here, yes? Even I'm, I'm, I'm not here to uh, um, advertise FL Technics actually, we know uh, many successful MRO projects like uh, Magnetic MRO also uh, and uh, this is a very good example. We know good successful MRO projects uh, opening now in Czech Republic, Job Air, uh, Czech Airlines Techniques. A lot of new MROs recently opened up in Poland, Line Techs, uh, expansion of Lot Arms Techniques, um, uh, Aeroplex, uh, Romanian. MROs uh, are also doing a very good positive job and uh, I mean yeah so this is something very successful I will maybe tell you uh, continue telling how did this story of Ukraine International and the Feld Techniques Corporation ended up yeah let's just come back to the presentation because I might forget what I wanted to share. Mm. Yes, yeah, some data which I think we should also always consider is that um, you see for uh, since 2013 we have uh, we see the tendency to to growth. Yeah, this is the future um, forecast. So basically, uh, aviation industry in total gives today to the world of. Uh, if it was in 2013, I think today it's about 65 million jobs all over the world, uh, which will double up in in. Uh, yeah, like in 12 years. The same for the number of uh, passengers carried 3.1 billion in 2013. I think today, Alexander, you should know this figure. I think it's much more, it's much bigger. I think today it's about 4 billion passengers or all over the world. And uh, it's like Half population of the world is actually flying, imagine, yes? Yeah? So we have about 8, uh, eight uh, billion people in the world and like uh, four of them are actually flying. So, uh, of course, some of some people fly more recent, like Alexander. I think he flies, uh, I think Alexander is making one billion flights, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> because he travels like five, five, six times per month. Um, so, distance flown grows double. Number of aircrafts, very practical and helpful data is growing. Yes, so we have today about 25,000 aircrafts in, no, about 30,000 of aircraft, so already in service today which will be also doubled and uh, some economical economic data so the global turnover from aviation is about three trillion dollars uh, per year and um, gonna be here I think yeah about six trillion in 2030 so um, yeah we we see that this uh, data gives us information that everything will be 
growing. Okay, um, actually we can also, what is important, we have to know about the challenges airlines are facing uh, today. So, as we see that, uh, well, if we look about what's, what is happening basically in, uh, in the airline side since I think uh, 15 years, uh, today airlines are fighting for, for cheaper price tickets because of the uh, growing competition, too many low-cost airlines opening up a number of aircrafts, uh, so the competition is growing, information is growing, data is growing, uh, uh, aircrafts, uh, like, you know, 10 years ago, uh, in Ukraine, all over the world, the aircraft from an, uh, an airline could fly in the morning let's say from, let's say, Kiev to Paris, uh, it was staying there till, let's say, till the evening, came back to Kiev, stayed during the night in Kiev, in the, so it actually made one uh, cycle per day. Today, Ukraine International Airlines, as well as many, Ryanair, all these uh, aggressive companies, uh, who are trying to fight for to take maximum out of the market are making up to six cycles per day so aircraft is flying non-stop uh, so this means that maintenance costs growing higher fuel costs well we see they uh, kind of uh, yeah fall but now they're a little bit growing up and we see that uh, the oil uh, oil giants are not allowing uh, to because we were talking about electric aircraft we we're talking about technologies we we're talking about uh, uh, electric cars and uh, electric engines but you see and this should what do this should actually lower the oil prices but what we see there is this very big hold for oil to be in um, proposition that's why we see that there are such things becoming in the world even this uh, recently there was a big uh, <clears throat> there was a big uh, blow up in one of the world's biggest uh, oil companies in Saudi Arabia which caused again the co cost of uh, fuel uh, growth so we see these tendencies and so basically uh, airlines are always in the challenge for uh, uh, for searching for the best service, for the cheapest service, for uh, at that time the quality should be at the, uh, at the high level. So <coughs> this is just an example of how you see even the airline tickets since 1980s were uh, dropping down, uh, were dropping, now they started to, maybe they're somewhere at this level still, uh, because today you can easily buy uh, a ticket round trip, I think 200, 300 dollars around Europe, I mean from one distance to to uh, from connecting Asia to let's say Europe, you can easily buy a ticket two months, one month before for like $400, $300, uh, whatever possible. Uh, comparing to what when I was a young kid, I remember in, um, I w we were not flying, people were not flying that much that time. And flying by airline was something like a luck, luck, luxury thing. And uh, uh, the airline, uh, the ticket uh, cost at that time was, I think, $600 for the round trip. I, I, I remember it was Larnaca, Kiev, uh, Kiev, Larnaca to the Cyprus. So, <clears throat> and uh, so this is what we have to consider, that the airlines are really going for 
uh, cost saving. Actually, cost saving is one of the recent projects I have, uh, uh, I'm doing right now in the company. We are trying to optimize uh, whatever cost is possible. So, just some also data which we have to consider. All this you can find actually, this is nothing special. Uh, this, everything is found in the internet. There are many reports. Uh, so, you see basically that number of aircrafts gonna be growing all the time. So, this is what I was showing. Yeah, there is a growth and uh, this is for the MRO. Uh, this is the amount of 77 billion dollars spent in the worldwide for the maintenance for the MROs. Uh, where are engine maintenance? The most expensive thing in the aircraft maintenance are engines. Uh, then it is airframe, it's the C checks, D checks, uh, line, uh, line maintenance is here. So, end component service, component maintenance, something broke up in the aircraft, computer, fuel system. So, uh, it also has, uh, has some share where all of these are going to be growing because number of aircrafts are growing and therefore there is a desperate need for the industry also to grow. By the way, I want to tell you one thing. Um, it is absolutely in the world it is uh, like norm normal that first the the airline is growing but the MROs is, is growing much more slower because it's um, it's the secondary thing yeah you understand because first of all the investors they want to invest in something which is bringing money today which is uh, making your capital and invest capitalization of investments higher that's for there is a, a very big uh, need for the airlines a lot of uh, companies are in line for uh, getting the aircraft and if you want to buy an aircraft you have to wait for five years in the line um, you can not, it is very hard to find uh, an aircraft even to lease today. Uh, MROs also the same, but the capacity, I mean the slots for maintenance, for example, if you want to maintain your car, yeah, uh, you, you call the, let's say, Alexander drives a Renault, he calls Renault service somewhere that way. Uh, and uh, says, I want, I need to make uh, an oil change. And they say, okay, we have time tomorrow. In the airline, you cannot do this. You need, let's say, uh, at least uh, you will be happy if someone in, in Europe will give you a free slot, available slot, let's say, I don't know, in three months, yeah? prior so it's uh, you will be very lucky if some airline uh, didn't come or become bankrupt and the slot became empty so everything is about planning aircrafts uh, today every, uh, the, the very important is planning yeah how operators plan their flights their schedule and also they are planning the maintenance so basically and the MROs are also working together with uh, the airline planning departments to reserve the slots and so on and so forth. But for example, FL Technics, they have only available slots, I think only, mm, only end of next year. So you can find a free slot to maintain the aircraft. Kaunas, Vilnius, they're all full. So, the same for a magnetic MRO, everything is full uh, as other MROs. Uh, by the way, there I wanted to t speak, uh, uh, the, there are two types of MROs. One is um, one type, one example is when airline like Lufthansa, KLM, Air France, Turkish Airlines, they are very, they are giant players and what they do, they 
create their own subsidiary or uh, or a <coughs> daughter company named Technique Lufganda, Technique uh, Turkish Airlines, Techniques. Uh, um, Kalemte, Air France Engineering, so on and so forth. So, uh, these are very big players. They are not customer oriented for third parties. They are oriented for maintaining the fleets of their parent airline. And some air, uh, MROs like FL Techniques, they're much smaller players, but they are working with various airlines because Lufganza may not have available slots for them. Uh, and it's easier for them to, let's say, outsource. Yes, yeah? so uh, there, are two ty the, the, there are two types of such uh, businesses. And uh, uh, for this, kind of companies who are uh, independent they are they need to think how to earn money more than those who are daughter companies because they are servicing you don't have to think you just have to do your job good you just have to do good engineering so basically uh, to um, serve the the big airline and econo economy but such companies like afl techniques uh, if it's going to be ukraine techniques or whatever they have to go search for some customer and therefore they have to work with him so uh, yes again some data that uh, we have plans for development yeah, just some more uh, accurate data. So basically, we see that uh, where is Eastern Europe? We have 700, 786 narrow bodies. I'm accenting, uh, putting an accent on narrow bodies because uh, let's say there are not many East European carriers who operate uh, wide bodies like 777, 767, Airbus A330, 350. Um, I'm not talking about Airbus A380 or uh, 747, Air, uh, Air, uh, 7, Boeing 747. So, um, and let's say a business like Magnetic MRO, FL Technics is mostly built for is only built for narrow bodies, Airbus A320 family, Boeing 737 NG and MAX, which is somewhere we're waiting. Uh, so you see that, let's say this is, I don't know if this figure is uh, realistic because there are different reports, but let's say, so, Eight, about 800 aircraft, uh, Alexander told me uh, more than 1,000 in Eastern Europe geography. Ukraine International Airlines has uh, 35 narrow bodies. So, uh, how many slots does FL Technics have uh, in Kaunas and uh, uh, Vilnius? Five plus three, so three, eight slots. Uh, aircraft you need usually from two to well from, let's say ten days to, to twenty one days to main in an aircraft in the hangar. Um, so you would just see that, FL Technics will be able to, serve maximum I think. 80 aircrafts per year, something about this, yeah? Maybe 100 something, if they grow the capacity. But uh, it's only one, sh sheer 100 aircrafts is maximum what the field Technics can make. So you see that this business will have opportunities. And this number of aircrafts will become, you know, in just 10 years, nine years it will be like even more so there is a definite need for the governments for the mro providers to build more hangars but 
Building more hangars doesn't mean you just build a hangar, you can maintenance an aircraft. There are such factors as lack of people, lack of trained uh, engineers, um, uh, and as you know, the, we have to, to my uh, vision, the quality of um, quality of uh, uh, bringing up qualified engineers is slightly falling because um, the let's say. Uh, universities today are also more oriented for commercial that is why there is a very big uh, it's a very very big challenge to become a qualified engineer so this is one thing I really want to highlight your attention on that if you will work for example if you still have time uh, till the end of uh, your university uh, like two three years uh, Believe me, becoming a good qualified engineer will give you really good opportunities. You will be part of a very big economy. Uh, because, I mean, this is one of the most problem, big problems uh, from the MROs I see, we see working with, cooperating, is that you cannot find very qualified, good uh, manpower. Uh, stuff so and this is not only hands this is planning this is mentality this is uh, um, let's say uh, love people's uh, love towards what they do yeah their responsibilities uh, today I think this unfortunately is a very big challenge because people they are driving by today by advertisement by Instagrams by all this kind of crap which diversifies their attention they want to people today are like you know um, uh, they don't want to stay somewhere let's like, for a long time they want to you know work a waiter today he's a waiter tomorrow he's an engineer then he's a hairdresser then he has a startup for some coffee shop or whatever so there is no people that are you know going crazy today really believe me so I'd like to focus your attention on becoming a very good professionals because you do really have a good uh, back, uh, backup here in your country to grow in this uh, industry. <coughs> we about suppliers. Yeah. So, um, just some uh, something uh, some few words about let's say our topic airline and uh, customer and the provider so what is the most important in airline which is this is number one and this is everything is about it this is actually safety um, this is yeah so why safety because um, all of the aviation uh, authorities all over the wide their main focus is safety so um, um, first thing that any business uh, provider like MRO, a repair shop for components, engines, training, I don't know, whatever, they should focus. To, uh, the whole industry is working on becoming our, let's say, because we are the customers, to make our journeys, our trip more safe. Yes, that is why this is number one. And when choosing a provider for maintenance, because imagine you're giving your aircraft, it doesn't matter that the aircraft costs $70 million. It's the matter is to, uh, to make the operations safe. And uh, 
That is why when a airline is choosing a provider, they want to, uh, they will, the number one they will be dealing, uh, bothering about is the, the safety, quality, uh, which, is achieve, uh, which can be achieved uh, in the maintenance process. And it doesn't matter, it's in-house or it's outsourced, number one is safety. So, second thing is when airline is choosing a uh, provider, they are uh, focusing on the, con uh, on the terms, commercial, uh, turnaround time, um, what would be the ferry flight cost, what would be the details of the contract, because uh, usually you know uh, a lot of examples you call uh, you your car is broken i love cars really you know sorry that's why i'm telling these examples and uh, but this is more simple for um, people who don't have enough knowledge so uh, you you like say i want to repair my let's say some exhaust system or I want to repair my cooling system you bring your car in the service and they say okay ah, they give you the price okay it costs let's say 200 euro and you're you're fine whether you come to pick up your car they say it's not ready why part is not here um, there is no maybe the, then or, or the engineer is not there or and, and you, you lose your time then second thing you come you see the bill it's not 200 euro it's 350 euro you say why is that you know there we had to replace this and that and you say yeah but maybe i should, could have fixed this thing and and so so on and you have these things i'm sure everyone had this all the time in their lives yeah and all of us want to save money. Today, airlines are also uh, being in very difficult financial situation. They uh, and the business processes are becoming more, um, let's say, uh, computerized. There is, there is, I mean, everything is more easier to control. But still, you have to fight for your costs. And in airlines, this is not $200. Uh, for example, just one, let's say, bolt may cost $80. Imagine, like, if you, for the screwdriver, you need to buy a bolt and screw it, maybe five cents. Yes, in aircraft, it's $80. Uh, average cost of component is today is uh, from four if new i'm if we're I, i'm uh, it's not new it's used if we talk about new part you cannot find it in the market at all and uh, the costs are like some system may cost from 50 to 250 thousand dollar for one component so it's very important for the airline to work with someone they know their maximum reliable, fair, uh, transparent, uh, the pro business processes are optimized, the um, work uh, progress can be monitored so a customer can see um, uh, what is happening with the air aircraft, at what stage, what kind of repairs done, what are the risks, uh, and this is presented, you know, like online. So uh, the more better, uh, the more um, um, better the MRO is, uh, reputable, the, the, the better this data, the, the, this, the feedback is uh, you, you can receive. And it's, the example is you want to make a repair of the landing gear somewhere, like we had such example in Miami. Uh, European MROs quoted us like uh, $400,000 for the three sets of landing gears. And uh, we found a shop in Miami which could do it for 200,000 euro, uh, yeah, dollars. So, of course, uh, we send the gears there, but unfortunately, the uh, customer 
there is no customer orientation uh, the quality of work is very low the speed of work uh, this um, uh, the turnaround time is very bad so for example we could overhaul the gears in europe for, for let's say average time normal is 35 45 maybe 50 days is maximum yeah but it's stuck there for two months and imagine the aircraft we had to lo loan the, the the gears so we pay for the loan so it's it's very huge cost it's like about uh, f i think around something like 40000 per month you have to pay for the loan of the gears yeah then you have to find a slot for the replacement this is time and this kills the planning when 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 the mro provider uh, sorry fucks fucks you up the airline can lose loads of money really loads of money because each delay of an aircraft costs huge money that is why today it's very important to choose maximum qualified co um, subcontract uh, contractor provider um, yeah so but from another side you cannot also pay huge money to MROs like Lufthansa or whatever because this is just out of the budget of the airline, imagine. So this is some challenge, you always have to find the right, uh, a right uh, shop, yeah, a right window to work with. <coughs> Let's get back on track. I think the, your notebook is bored already. Wait an hour. Yeah, I had a few words about uh, just uh, what is customer friendly today. Uh, I will just speak a little bit more on this. Um, for example, today is uh, the challenge of MROs is to uh, get the customer, get the new customer, uh, especially this is uh, a very big challenge for the new uh, businesses. What they do, imagine, well, um, imagine uh, you, um, the airline is already working with some customer for ages, yes, they, everything is good, they are happy, Sec uh, they are satisfied with the service, everything is okay. So, what can a new uh, MRO do to approach the new customer? There is a already history of relations, you, it's, it's very hard to, to approach. What do you need to do? Um, this is a very... Now, this is something where a shareholder and managers they have to work out some strategy because the new businesses actually they may either die yes it's in any business i mean you if you open up something you need uh, to know like to try um, there is a trial period when you want to you know you have the business plan and then you want to there there is the implementation stage and this stage is usually often a very big challenge uh, and your business either will die either it, it will stay alive or bring you very small profit well let's say you want to open up a grocery market yeah uh, and uh, what would you do first of all you want to know that there are already grocery markets all where uh, there is no, no problem to find milk food today yes it's everything is available the price is everywhere is all the same there is no such thing as someone has uh, let's say uh, coca-cola let's say uh, in 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 one shop it's uh, one dollar and in another shop it's two no it's everywhere is the same even in restaurants it doesn't cost much today the same happens in the mros 
Like, uh, and moreover, there's a challenge that the big players like Boeing, um, Airbus, Honeywell, uh, UTC Aerospace, all these giants who produce air, aircraft components, uh, uh, they know that airlines are saving money they will never buy let's say new parts they will never pay huge uh, uh, prices for for the maintenance what are they doing they have the money because boeing is much rich much more rich than let's say some small mro so who has more opportunities they can do crazy things so what they do they are trying to take the business from small mros they are trying to create, uh, let's say, um, uh, or poss possibilities for the customer uh, to, to, to have more business. For example, uh, like four years ago, we had a turnover with Boeing. It was like, not, maybe, I don't know, maybe one million, no maybe one million dollar per month was spent to Boeing yeah for components programs today it's about three million or four million dollars so Boeing is really taking away businesses from small players because we are Boeing operators and uh, therefore this is a very big challenge so what to do what to do um, the small company have to know its opportunities because for big company it's very hard to you know uh, they will not do small detailed things they will speak about big contracts big selling big IT products uh, uh, I mean some PBH programs PBH is something like airline space uh, for the hourly rates and the provider is doing a compo uh, supplying a component on the flight hour rate. So it's like uh, it's like your insurance. You don't care whether you break your car or you injure your arm. Uh, you're 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 safe. Yeah, when you have injury, you go to let's say the doctor. Your insurance pays for you. The same in. This is like PBH services uh, from providers. The airline pays a uh, rate and they're safe. They're covered for some components. So this is also a big tendency. But uh, let's say the small companies, they can fight for something smaller because every airline, every customer has problems. There is impossible that no one has no problems. And the main idea is to be in touch to be friendly to spend invest money into uh, into trying to learn the specific of the airline one of the examples there was a very small company uh, it's a english company but the, the shareholder is from india uh, they came to UIA and uh, say we want to become your provider it's some small company no one knows it he said please give me a try I want I really we have okay let's give a trial the guy devoted his time only for our account and he was you know like working day and night trying to find something from the market and uh, in in let's say half year they achieved a big result for example let's say our uh, even you know and this actually made some players big players a little bit angry like they say what's happening why is our business growing smaller uh, because here is some little guy came did the work good he did uh, he didn't just came i want to sell here is our services our website blah 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 we have aog support we have everything here we have warehouse here there and bye bye no he really did a good job he really wanted to be in touch with the engineers because sometimes airline is searching for component it needs an alternative part number or it needs some maybe a repair which is not possible um, big MROs are not doing that 
Yeah, and uh, they're saying, oh, this component is scrapped. And the, the smaller company who has more information about a good repair station, the same about cars. Yeah, you can either fix your, uh, you can change your radiator or you can fix it. And your, um, well, I mean, radiator is not a good example because there's some, let's say, um, other examples. I mean, basically, you, when your phone breaks up, you can uh, you have a screen broke up. You can either replace all, all the screen, or you can maybe do the how how it's called this uh, welding. Yes, micro welding, and uh, you, actually you save very big money, but you get a good result. So this is something the small companies should always think about. Another thing is the, uh, as I said, the professionalism of engineers. You will be, uh, you will be very surprised, but you know, even such companies as Lufthansa, KLM, or France, they're really doing a lot of fuck ups. For example, they are so big that they don't want to focus on, let's say, our aircrafts. Um, uh, let's say specification they want to sell a big product uh, they will do this product in a very qualified way but in the reality if they would be a much smaller company I'm not don't don't get me wrong I don't want to say that they're a bad provider but uh, let's say they are not focusing sometimes they don't have enough uh, time or they're not like focused on you know, uh, giving the customer just exactly what would be right for him. So, and uh, at the same time, we as an airline are not ready to pay for the services, which, for example, we don't need a Mercedes to drive to the work. We just need, let's say, a car, a feasible car, economical and effective car, yeah, which could uh, do the job. So this is all about, because if we pay more, we can drive this Mercedes, then we cannot pay for it. And what happens? We cannot, we cannot do anything else. So when companies spend more than they uh, can, m more than, let's say, uh, what they have in their budget, of course, this brings to bankruptcies. And there are a lot of examples like that. And uh, this is also, yeah, we spoke about the reputation. So this is for selling management. Uh, another good example. Mm, we had a very uh, big fight for the PBH contract. The contract was for five years and its cost is, uh, imagine, imagine it's about, uh, it is about, 500 uh, the spend is about six hundred thousand dollar per month yeah the contract for five years for all our for yeah for supporting our 737 ngs and at that time uh, there was a company who um, were was very closing very uh, working very close with uh, with us and uh, it was a UK company and they were so uh, sure that they are going to get this contract because they know everything, they have ages of uh, cooperation. Uh, uh, they were absolutely sure that they will win. Yeah, and uh, but the, the challenge, uh, the tender took, took like for one year. Um, Another company who actually won the tender, it's a Swiss company, it's not a secret, a Sir Technics. Um, imagine uh, a company who has one of the highest uh, man hour rate because their facilities are in Zurich airport. Switzerland is one of the most expensive countries in Europe after. <laughs> or in the world, yeah. I think maybe Norway, yeah, it's the same. but. Uh, imagine 
And this company wants to beat the price. They say, we will do everything for you. And they really did a great job. They, uh, I think they even took this contract, let's say in, uh, it's no, maybe not a profitable contract, let's say, yes, but and they wanted maybe to show their investors that they have a good approach their engineering was fantastic they really were you know stayed with us while this the other this english company they were like you know lazy and they say hey come on we're not gonna do you business for that amount of money and then when they saw that you know that there is a going a damping the, the fall of the rates they said no we will not go into this business like in principle i mean come on is this a customer uh, relation no and that company uh, in the result they really won the tender we were slightly afraid because we didn't work with them we didn't have the experience we thought that something there is a trick somewhere but really it, it was in the result it was a, f uh, a fantastic service um, for me it was like a total change of my you know mentality because uh, i thought that uh, you know such ty type of business of like pbh is uh, gonna be a loss for the airline we're gonna pay for it. we don't know what and there are a lot of tricks in the contract yeah, the contract is actually risky, but the result, this was a risk. The shareholders tried to go for it because they wanted to have, uh, let's say, um, transparent and controllable uh, spends. Because when you pay each month a fixed sum and you know that today you don't need to pay let's say tomorrow today your cost is this then it's like this then it's again like this and you have to always uh, let's say check whether it's you know everything is correct when you just pay uh, per, per month it's easy easy for the airline for the budget planning so they decided to go for this and the results were happy but what happens next Actually, the contract was won just because of the attitude of the engineers, of the sales managers to the customer. They really did a fantastic job. I never seen every, anything like that. I mean, really, they like were ready. A Swiss company, why do they need us? Let's say they have big business. Uh, EasyJet, uh, whatever, a lot of uh, European carriers. Uh, uh, why do they need this? But they did, they, they did not, let's say, bother and they really did a uh, v v very good approach and they got the contract. What happens next? In three years, this company, because they showed a very good uh, service attitude, uh, they didn't uh, show us any tricks like we had some extra bills you know everything was transparent um, now you ukraine international airlines is playing a uh, engine tender 100 million dollars tender for 34 engines and uh, Again, Sir Technics won the standard Why? And this was the same, the same situation when they were competing with uh, another shop, which was like all, all, all the same thing they did. They said, "No, we are not going into this. This price is low. They, we don't want this." But you know, I want to say that from. Air, from airline side, I know where we can, let's say, um, I understand that if I would be them, I would go for this, you know, because uh, I know that, let's say, some insights, I know things from the inside, and then I know that they should, should just take this business. But they didn't, because they thought that 
if we are fighting for the prize, then we are like, you know, doing some show and we're not fair. But who cares? This is about, you should not care about, or you should not be embarrassed uh, chasing your customer. Of course, it's not just, oh, come on, I want to work with you. Oh, please, I have this good. No, it's something that you should try to do a professional approach. Uh, there are many trainings for sales today. There are many information you can read about about how to sell right. And I don't want to talk about this, but really this is, uh, you just have to do your job on the maximum, yes? And it's like, you know, fr from one side, when the sale guy, sales guy sells his product, we also saw examples when engineering side did their job bad. And this actually closes the door to the future business and relations. But when the sales team and the engineers perform well, when the engineers, after the contract is sold, the sales guy go to another customer, but the engineers are working with us, they're really doing, and if they're doing a good job, they don't want to um, cheat us on the man hours, adding extra hours or something like this, they are maximum fair, they really want to help us, they, are, they really want to show us the professional approach. You actually get in love with this and you want to continue working, you want to continue working. So, um, having said that, even if you know that, uh, you, let's say the customer is already has a contract and everything, try work, see, try to find your niche. What would be your focus in the business? What types of repairs you will do? Maybe it's the APU repairs, maybe it's fuel system repairs, maybe try to find uh, connects, yeah? For example, try to connect one uh, uh, opportunity with another. Try to find a good shop, for another example. Our aircraft, 767, very old aircraft, uh, year 93, stuck in the um, Turkish Airlines Techniques, uh, our service provider. Uh, reputed MRO, very good, but, but Turkish, yeah? And uh, I'm, no, I don't, again, but they are, I mean, we know the mentalities, yes, we know that every nation has its own downsides, fast sides, uh, good sides. Turkish are, I respect them for being very active, for being, you know, holding you for, uh, you know, they will try, they're very good sellers, so. But sometimes on the performance, there are some, no, not even laziness, but uh, this, um, uh, we, as our aircraft was very old, there was a component needed to repair. There was no, nothing available on the market because no one even produces this. It's a very old component. Uh, our logistics has to seek for solutions. They go to FL Techniques, they say, no, we don't, we don't have this. Can you repair? No. Why not? Why didn't they repair it? We went to, we found one shop in UK, they said, you know, let us try to do it through one shop in Miami. They send it, like the price for this new component was about, I think, would be about $35,000, I think. But they repaired it just for 10. And in 10 days, yes, our aircraft got stuck for 10 days, but I mean, this is the opportunities. And I'm sure that if someone in the fell technics or other let's say uh, trading uh, supplier company would have more information on the shops what are the needs of customer what is his fleet if i know that my customer operates a fleet this age and uh, on the sea checks uh, the um, common problem is such 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 
I should, you know, I should help with him. I should see what are the, what if, uh, it's, it's impossible that no one is facing difficulties. So you have to go and ask, ask, let me do the homework. Let me try to search. Let me do it. Don't be afraid to do that because you will never success. And uh, otherwise you're being very smart, joining just the big players and but you have also this opportunity. But anyway, I gave you a few examples how it works and uh, what are the success stories. Um, I think Alexander is a bit, he wants to go home already. Alexander, you don't have a wife, but why are you always uh, trying to be home so early? What's, what's the... <laughs> Okay, I'm coming to the end. Once again, sorry, my, I understand my presentation is maybe not that, uh, not that, let's say, informative and uh, doesn't have a special design, but uh, the idea was what I was really thinking, how to make it useful, and that's why, uh, that's why we didn't come to a good format. But anyway... Um, Okay, we discussed uh, some MROs in Eastern Europe. Yes, uh, we said that it is basically Poland, uh, Lithuania, um, Estonia, uh, it's Czech Republic, it's, um, it's uh, Romania said, it's uh, yeah, Serbia. Um, so all these are the drivers for the future of uh, MRO providers and basically the future for engineers, uh, for people who want to become good engineers. Um, and these businesses will have to grow. That's why also I want to say about collaborations and merging tendencies. Today, uh, a lot of MROs, when they are growing, they're starting to buy some businesses, they have the experience. For example, for me, I, uh, because I'm also involved in some startups, not, not non-airline, uh, and you know, every time, for, for my experience, every time you want to make something new, I believe 99% it will not work. So, uh, yeah, there are some people who are very creative, who have, uh, they were in the right time, in the right place. They had a good chance. Yes, they can do this business, but anyway, you will be facing, uh, otherwise you have to bear, uh, bear, bear, yourself in, bear yourself in this business and uh, sleep with it and don't have, uh, not have your own life. Other, but in case you give it to control to someone, that you will then break with him relations because uh, you will, I mean, okay, so. And that's why uh, I am more for um, you know, merging with big players and uh, becoming a part of uh, a created business. For example, I know that if I open up a MRO in Ukraine, I will not have a new MRO. I will not have, uh, maybe I will have some customers around me but it will take me five years to develop it to create the name to I mean it is very it is time and time is valuable I know that if I create the correct atmosphere I can sell this to Lufgans, FL Technics whatever and be a part of the business and it is much more safe yes you can you will be earning much less, but for me, it's, I think it's much better to earn 10% from 100 million rather to earn 100% from, from $500,000. So, 
Uh, and there are a lot of tendencies like that. I told about FL Techniques buying around your, uh, around the world, uh, MROs, line maintenances, opening up shops, a certain Techniques opens up. Ah, by the way, uh, they are moving to cheaper countries uh, such as Malta, Serbia. Um, so optimizing. Hmm? Romania also be being uh, mm, what's what's by the way what's the story in Romania what happened because I don't know about uh, merging in, uh, in Romania but anyway so we see that Lufganza Techniques is buying new facilities around Eastern Europe uh, we see that even in Russia S7 engineering uh, being grow, grow, uh, growing their facilities, Asia, e everything. So um, we see that big guys buying small ones, and this is normal. Uh, by the way, what did uh, the director, the previous, um, the former director of uh, FL Techniques? I think he, after he went to Magnetic MRO, he grew it up. He had a good, uh, but, but he didn't create a new business. He uh, bought a, with an investor, a created MRO, but he brought his knowledge, experience into the business. He drew it to a successful level. Then he sold it to Chinese guys. Now he went somewhere to Australia, whatever, and doing cool things. So, um, and as I said, that in order to in order to be effective, you have to uh, because not only airlines are fighting for the uh, cost saving, but the MROs they should uh, plan their work force effectively. They should use the optimized tooling, IT programs. Uh, there should be good quality, there should be good uh, uh, control, monitoring of all the processes. Um, uh, what else we can say? Uh, the facilities should be optimized and uh, this is something not new. The world today is all, every day talking about effective uh, manage, management of business process, everything this is available, but we should not be lazy, seek for this knowledge, um, invite professionals and uh, not um, be greedy to pay good salaries to uh, good workers and uh, if you want to achieve result, of course, because if you just want a guy who will do regular uh, thing and whether you pay him, let's say, um, if you pay him more, he will not do his job better. This is, uh, this is also a big mistake of uh, companies when they are paying more. But uh, when people are not happy about the salary, you say, okay, I will pay you more. But will you do the job better? Will you do more? No. And we also have to understand our capacity, what we can process. And uh, so this is, this is it. I think I tried to tell you something about our about my own experiences, uh, my, my little experience I've gone through, what I see, uh, I saw during my work in UIA and uh, what, I th what, what accents uh, should do the, done, be done by airlines, what accents should be done by uh, the service provider. So if uh, I think for that, that's all for me, and uh, if uh, you would have some questions, I would be happy to answer them, or maybe I missed something, or you are interested in, I'm happy. Just a small one, maybe? Yeah. Have you, ever, have you ever had a situation where you fly somewhere in the country, mm -hmm. you have an uh, unexpected breakdown, 
an engine something else and since you said that the available spots for the all MROs are mm. mostly three months at least or a year what you do then if it's as you're in Ukrainian Airlines well uh, it's uh, there's uh, it's not a really big challenge because um, basically uh, when aircraft uh, is flying or maintenance uh, on on the apron on the line maintenance yes uh, I mean major uh, faults they uh, big problems they're usually found during sea check when the aircrafts in the hangar and when it's like you know uh, uh, so basically this is um, all about air th uh, airworthiness and um, quality control of the airline basically when their aircraft is inspected like you know when your car is you know when you always treat look after it and uh, today uh, let's say well Boeing 737NG it's not a digitalized aircraft but Airbus A320 Embraer uh, 190 uh, th these aircrafts are like you know fully controllable and uh, today even like OEMs uh, Airbus Boeing uh, Embraer they do provide you aircraft health management programs which would allow you to monitor what is the problem and basically for newer aircraft this risk to find something which is not available uh, it's not a big problem moreover there is um, there such cases there like maybe one time a month on our big fleet when aircraft is actually air uh, grounded when it cannot fly uh, because when there's something small you can open DMI deferred uh, uh, maintenance and your aviation authority looks after okay we allow you to fly back of course there are category of components which are let's say uh, no go so aircraft cannot go or fly with it so in this case uh, this is uh, a matter of professionalism of logistics of the airline how they work with uh, the providers so and the again this is the answer the more quality providers you have in your pool the faster they will find a part so basically there is there was never such situation i think we had several times when aircraft was uh, grounded for well, like five days or one week but this was either it was an engine uh, if, for example if there's a bird strike yes it's not a big problem because you just uh, uh, the aircraft all sh or the airline should have something in their storage they should invest into the stocks and uh, when there's a bird strike usually you only your fan blades are being uh, damaged so you, it's like a matter of maybe delay of half a day or one day yes so also line maintenance provider uh, if if it's a correct uh, right company then you will never have the problem so basically when you're uh, contracted with professionals y you minimize this risk to have a big problem yeah <coughs> Do MRO provide providers uh, often have to pay damages to the airline for bad uh, services? Very good question, actually. Um, you know, this is a very, uh, very, um, let's say, um, controversial question, because problem, because you know usually when any contract is concluded with someone let's say everyone is becoming very smart today but sometimes the smarter people uh, you know we say in our language gorya tuma so it's like uh, pain from your pain from your brain yeah and uh, they, the, the the legal teams are try to you know 
um, try to be so precise, they try to tackle all these contracts that they really sometimes scare away the provider. The provider just say, look, I don't want to take these risks on me. But anyway, there are warranties in any contracts, there are warranties and this warranty should be fulfilled. Now, how the airline will fight for this warranty also depends on their will uh, to, to close this. Of course, for such companies as Boeing or Honeywell, or it's easy, but even they try to cheat for example, just very recent situation, APU costs $1 million uh, on a new aircraft. Uh, aircraft is 2018 production year. It goes unserviceable. Okay, we say to Honeywell, guys, we say to Boeing, Honeywell, we have a problem. Um, they say, okay, send this APU to our certified uh, repair station. Uh, it's a KLM company called, um, uh, called uh, uh, Epcor. So in uh, Amsterdam, they say, send it there. The guys from Epcor say, from Netherlands say, okay, but this will be like on time and material. And this was the mistake of Ukraine International Airlines that they didn't cooperate. Uh, they did not um, uh, com co communicate this process correct. It went to the repair station. The uh, repair uh, that they gave us the one for the loan for free of charge. So we continue flying. But they say, guys, pay us 180,000 for repair. We say, no, this is a warranty. I mean, we have a contract with Boeing. Boeing has contract for, for warranty. Boeing says it's for Honeywell. Honeywell says go to Epcor. So um, Epcor says, give us money. Okay, we try to solve this. We say, we will not pay you money. They say, no, you have to pay the money, but we will compensate. Okay. Even thought we don't want to do that, but even if we pay, what they will do, they will uh, try to say, okay, we will give you credit let credit note. We will not give you money, but we will give you credit note. So next time you have a problem, you come back and do. So means we have to come and spend uh, uh, spend our money again over there, and there will be additional bill bills. So, so this is examples of. Uh, I've honestly, I, for my, for this, if we look on the statistics, it's 50-50 when MRO uh, is ready to uh, to take the blame. But again, this is the reputation. For me, I would better lose money but get the reputation. And many relations broke down when uh, MRO did not want to fulfill its. Well, come on, it has a turnover of like maybe $10 million per month and they don't want to take $180. This is really, you know, sometimes they even go to put uh, to the court on the airline, which is actually really crazy. I mean, every, a customer is always right. This, and I think, uh, of course, customers sometimes is being uh, sometimes is being very aggressive uh, when they're trying to uh, some representatives during the maintenance of aircrafts. Uh, usually there is a representative of an airline who communicates on the process with the MRO and he's like going after, after each worker, hey, why are you using this? What's that? Why is there? No, this is 10, not 10 man hours, but 9 man hours. This is it. And the, the provider says, come on, can you get this guy out of here? He's like, <laughs> not, uh, uh, he's just spoiling the job. And, and this time, these things also, also happen. But uh, anyway, if we come back to the warranty, it's very hard, uh, sensible thing to, uh, and I think the, 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 um, uh, 
task is for us for the airline and us for MRO to manage the process together. So this is the And having in mind that you know, a few years ago we had small planning, we had Monarch, and some other illness uh, going bankrupt, mm -hmm. do you think that Thomas Cook bankruptcy is going to have any impact on the um, MROs in Europe? Um, yeah, I've heard that they have the difficult situation, but I didn't hear that they are bankrupt. It was announced on news. Yesterday. Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I will tell you that this um, actually uh, affects uh, the MRO planning because uh, the, the, the MRO be because yes they have already planned manpower they will not be able to sell this slot because a normal company already booked its slots way ahead so uh, definitely they will be losing money but uh, uh, you know here I would like to um, use one my one of my let's say thinking um, when I started uh, when I first started bringing customers to, uh, to UIA maintenance facility in Kiev and uh, Alexander, you remember this. Uh, our, let's say, um, uh, at that time, the maintenance management, they did not want to grow this business. They did not want to do it because uh, they were like happy with airline servicing their aircrafts. We don't need to bother about extra manpower, but I was saying that, look, you, the MRO, is paying a salary. It's not paying, usually it's not paying to their workers or uh, their, uh, yeah, they have expenses for renting the hangar to, to, to uh, because it depends if the hangar is owned. It's, you, you don't care. I mean, uh, I like this hotel, yeah, basically, uh, doesn't matter, you... Uh, sell 100% of the load or you sell 80% or you, you will get uh, your expenses will be the same because someone owes, owns this building it's not uh, rented yes so it depends on the exposures of the MROs and uh, yes actually when an airline is not fulfilling or not bringing in their uh, their aircraft this is a very painful story and very often air, uh, airlines uh, the, the players they uh, uh, break, uh, spoil relations but uh, depends uh, this actually depends on if your salary exposure is uh, it's common yeah like you pay your workers your management every month fixed sum okay you will maybe not get extra uh, extra uh, profit but you will not lose anything so because you have other customers and uh, uh, but again this is this is playing a very negative effect for the MROs when they are not fulfilling their budgets and this is uh, all, always important because many companies, they uh, uh, shareholders, they want to, to sell their brand to someone and they want to get more contracts, you know, to, to get the, you know, um, in the, like to, to hire the investment cost of the company. So, but it depends if, the, if, if an MRO, for example, like a Fel Technics or a Magnetic, they would uh, just work with Thomas Cook, of course, this would be a very big problem. But if they diversify customers and sell, let's say, uh, this is also, I think, a strategy for MROs that they know, okay, we will sell five slots to this company, five slots to that company, and like this. But yeah, this is, I think, it will... It will not... Uh, okay, uh, it will not affect the 
business significantly or, or, or and I don't think any MROs will get bankrupt because of this but of course uh, I, I think it's not a big problem uh, how are you preparing for the Boeing 70 Max on ground if, if at all yeah uh, actual question because we had uh, actually Th three aircrafts we should de deliver it this year, uh, this autumn, and unfortunately this played a very uh, some negative impact on our commercial development because we had sales. Uh, uh, we the, the, the commercial team of the airline made already its planning sales. Now we have to. We had a program that some aircrafts, old aircrafts, should be uh, redelivered. Uh, some, uh, uh, and now we have to search for new aircrafts. But <laughs> as you know, there's a big uh, line for the 737 NGs now. And uh, as Ukraine is a country with, which is well. Uh, not in the first list, let's say, because of the problems with Russia and some things in the East. <coughs> of course, it's not uh, nothing, I mean, uh, this is not a problem in reality, in reality but many uh, financial institutions, they are putting a risk on the country because of these processes and uh, therefore for us to get an aircraft on good terms is much harder than to get it for any airline in Europe, for example. And uh, that is why uh, we are uh, actually waiting for the news. We know the latest news is that the problem should be not fixed, but the aircraft should be in service, I think, next autumn, correct? Yeah, because this is the last information I heard of 2020. And uh, we just wait for what authorities tell us, what Boeing will tell us, uh, uh, because we had already preparations before for the um, training, for the personnel, we already did this, now we just have to wait. Did we do the training? Yeah. No, you, see. Yeah. you see, they won, but we didn't get benefit any, because they sold us the training services, uh, but this didn't help us out. But, yeah, I see so. so. The new information about uh, the real solution of this problem with the Max is uh, is uh, next autumn or next year? Yes, this is the last uh, information. Next spring, no, next. Sorry, next spring. Sorry, next spring. Yeah, the aircraft should be. No, no, no. The, it was the problem should have had been have been fixed this autumn but uh, the latest news that the aircrafts will mm, be in the service no but i think it's autumn of 2020 but no? the, this aircraft can you help it, and uh, after stop it they will be uh, need uh, maintenance and uh, in one time uh, 400 aircrafts will be need maintenance not any um, no some uh, MRO and work haven't uh, slots for this. It will be a long process. And you ask it about uh, MRO, it's good or bad. It's bad. This Thomas Cook had uh, 117 uh, aircrafts. For this aircraft, book, uh, was booking uh, about, I think, about 17 70, uh, slots in this size. And uh, the slots are uh, now available. It was very good for for for, for any Lithuanian uh, airlines. It has uh, have not very good plan. Yeah, but but now this aircraft need uh, redelivery uh, re checks or redelivery. No, in fact, it, in fact, delivery checks, and we are having slot any slot. You, you mean if the airline goes bankrupt, the lesser will take his aircraft and maintenance in it yes, in any uh, yeah, this is Maybe also. It's not yeah. Right, but, uh, it's neat. It's yeah, for example, one, one example we have a overhaul program for landing gears with Lufthansa Technique, 
and uh, two aircrafts and actually this contract was very strict that we have to because if one of the aircrafts uh, will not uh, uh, one of the gears will, will not go we have to pay penalty but uh, what happened the lesser uh, our uh, let's say management decided to redeliver two aircrafts so and we told Lufgans look sorry but the lesser is taking away the aircrafts and uh, uh, what should we do uh, we uh, agreed with the lesser that they will do it still in Lufganza technique so nothing changed they excluded this aircraft and amended it in the contract and had a direct contract with the lesser so as I understand right now it's a great time to create aircraft maintenance scum yes uh, if you if you if you have a professional approach and you know how to do it then it's uh, um, then it's a very good opportunity. Yes. <laughs> Angar, people, money. I represent uh, Vilnius Airport, and you talked about uh, airlines and MRO. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see in our case the third part is airport because. Some Definitely, I. If you remember, I, I mentioned about uh, when I started speaking. I mentioned about uh, airport because uh, actually the infrastructure belongs to the airport yeah. usually. And do you have uh, in Kiev some agreements uh, between airport and uh, MRO? Or? Yes, uh, basically in Ukraine uh, uh, we have only one hangar in Air, Kyiv airport, Kyiv Borispol International Airport. There are two airports actually in Kyiv, one smaller in the city center, one outside Kyiv bigger. And uh, both of them are, no, one of them, the big one is uh, governmental, the second one is state owned. Uh, the smaller one has the hangar but which belongs to the governmental company. So basically still the land is private, oh, uh, governmental, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, as for our airport where our uh, airline is based, we have the hangar. This is the only one certified hangar in Ukraine for uh, the 737s and uh, this hangar is owned by the airport and um, we have a 10-year agreement with them with the airport so for us for the MRO because we also started um, we uh, moved our MRO into independent company now it's being certified, but uh, imagine there is a risk that the contract for the uh, air uh, for the hangar was signed like five years ago with the airline. Now the MRO is a uh, <laughs> uh, subsidiary company, independent entity, which does not have. Uh, a contract with the airport, but they have contract with the airline. So you are so it's very complicated scheme. And imagine this airline MRO is going to be now uh, certified. It's been invested money. Imagine in when this contract will finish, MR, uh, the airport will say, like Alexander will come to Kiev airport director and say, hey. Don't work with UA, work with the Fell Technics. And imagine they will sign a contract with the Fell Technics. And what will the MRO do? So, again, this is a risk for investment uh, side. Yes, this is um, very important to have uh, the facilities on the um, good uh, and uh, fair terms. Yes, feasible terms. Because 
Uh, another thing is the infrastructure. Sometimes the hangar is in one place, the warehouse in totally different space and uh, the airport, you know, this uh, regime zones is so um, unlogical that this, again, this br kills uh, the effective, uh, because this kills time for component to be delivered from apron because in Kiev the apron is on one side and you have to go to the hangar you have to go like half a day uh, the other way around and uh, but the engineering is in one place so this is not optimized when you're in uh, inv investing you have to understand that your hangar is uh, on the uh, you have a good contract on good terms uh, for long term, your, I mean, the facility is okay. Um, the, it will be easy for customer uh, to, let's say, get uh, the access because in Kiev you have to like wait for two weeks to get a permit for the airline representative to get. In Vilnius you can get it for one day, so. Um, Yes, but this is a. By the way, then a question to you: Why you are not talking to, with uh, the maintenance providers to give them opportunity to grow their hangars? Because here it's only one, two, three, three bays, yeah, three lines. But in Kaunas we have now three providers. Ranair, FLP, yeah, top. but you, they don't have space, so why not build one more building here and... Uh, Very expensive. Uh, you see? Mm -hmm. So you see all these are things uh, which are challenging. So from one side, yes, it's a cool opportunity to invest, but from other side, you have to... Mm, understand what is your counterpart, how, what is the contract, what relations and uh, what's the facility. Sometimes the um, investor invests in the hangar and the hangar is not uh, uh, built to the standards and it's also, so these things also happen and it's, uh, so it's very sensible. So any more questions? Which airport, sorry? Daugavpils, Latvia. Uh -huh. It hasn't been used since 1990s. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be feasible to get it up and running just for MROs, for example, this kind of a business model. But airport serving MROs, not passenger airport. Um, I think Alexander can help me uh, because I know very little about Latvian situation. I know that uh, there is a key carriers are a carrier as Air Baltic, but where are they doing their maintenance? Air Baltic now have hangar have uh, in, in Latvia have, in Latvia in uh, uh -huh. Riga. Mm -hmm. But if we speak about uh, Daugavpils, I think the biggest problem is people. It's uh, certifying stuff. It's maybe mm -hmm. the biggest problem in Europe fall. Mm -hmm. In uh, our region, yes, fall uh, MRO. And uh, in Latvia, no, we have really in uh, Baltic states, we have five big MRO. Mm. FL Techniques, Magnetic, uh, Ranair, Air Baltic, and Duty now. It's five, uh, ah, uh, MS Jets. And uh, really, all need people. And really, I think uh, if uh, uh, FL Techniques uh, can, about 40, 40 men certifying staff tomorrow go in and go. And uh, Dogo Pills have people. Dogo Pills, it's very, it's compli complicated uh, problem. And uh, any uh, private, uh, pr private uh, investor don't uh, like. Uh, invest in this because uh, for example pilot need uh, three yeah? and pilot uh, send and uh, send fly and uh, take money or techniques of fine start I think about seven eight no, from zero to certifying start about seven years and uh, it's very long time very big investment not any private uh, private uh, MRO not investment this 
in the not still in uh, Lithuania, in Europe. It's maybe only China, Vietnam, and uh, Singaporean people's no, government investment are there. And it's a big problem and uh, it's complicated, I think. I think it's, you know, to the, because such examples are all over the world, yes? And uh, the thing is, I think this is the problem where government is and airport and airline operator are, and MROs are not working together to develop a smart strategy because basically uh, the government should understand uh, how what sh infrastructure they should create which conditions they should create for the future potential of the airline to do its business there uh, or in this region and this is i think this is a very hard job because to get imagine governmental uh, managers airline managers shareholders uh, people who know how to do this business investment uh, airport is very hard to for example in kiev why we're not building the hangar because the management of the airport they come and say hey we have this land let's build a hotel ah the development companies around kiev if they see the passenger growth of airport yeah let's build a hotel good let's build a parking good but uh, investor of course he will not spend his money into building the hangar to get his investments returned in 10 years but let's say the government should think about this and the government has not so it's a very complicated process but uh, and a very big challenge Predicted was not unexpected. Yes, several years ago. Uh, definitely, definitely. I th uh, moreover, I will tell you that if we talk about maintenance, I believe no one, no one in the government is thinking about this. There, are of course, investor or MRO who wants to do th something, and they work with the government they achieve results this is possible but let's say it's one story when the mro is already created like in lithuania in uh, vilnius yeah but for example if we talk about like latvia or kiev where let's say there is um absolutely no talking about this in the Ministry of Infrastructure or in uh, or in the airport uh, they don't want to take the opportunity on themselves they want someone to come and do uh, or invest but there is no investor who would come and easily invest his money like that that is why you see it's more about business but it's not mm, for example in soviet you, at the times it was better that the government was working as a you know as a common machine as a common mechanism today uh, it's pure capitalism where uh, you know gears which are uh, bringing money they are working somewhere here is another gear not working it will create more and more gears and sometimes it makes stuck or some or i don't know maybe tomorrow things will change and but i think this is a work of uh, everyone together everyone to speak about this because i mean we're talking about safety and we have to uh, speak about developing the maintenance infrastructure of uh, infrastructure although i am an operator and, uh, and i don't should not care i can outsource if our mro will give us not good price i will say guys you're not effective i will fly to poland lithuania and uh, do my aircraft there it's much more effective uh, much more the quality is maybe even better so why should they bother about this so
you know, but still I understand this problem and I understand that this is still an opportunity, but how will the government understand this? Maybe it's, it's a big challenge because it's not a question of one, two, three years. It's a strategy of five years, 50 years. I don't know. Blank Airbus, it's 40, 40 years, for every year, mm -hmm. it's 40 years in future planning. Yeah, so you see, you can see where we are and this is like this. Any question? We have two hours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander.